This training session will cover the Translation Look Aside Buffer, or TLB. I will cover what it is, how to initialize it, and how TLB exceptions are handled. First, let me explain what we are dealing with. In the MIPS architecture, operating systems such as Linux use a section of memory called KUSEG, or kernel user segment, for user processes. The addresses in this segment are called virtual addresses because they do not directly address physical memory. Instead, these virtual addresses need to be mapped to a physical address. When a process requests access to memory, the TLB translates the virtual address to a physical address where the data is actually stored. Using the TLB will enable you to do several things. For the security minded, the TLB allows the OS to control a process's memory access to its own data areas and not be able to read or write over other processes' memory. The TLB can also be used to prevent a process from overwriting its own instructions. It allows non-contiguous physical memory to appear as contiguous to a process. On MIPS processors, it allows programs to access physical memory above the first 512 megabytes. A process can be linked to run at a specific address, but be loaded and run from anywhere in physical memory. Let's review the MIPS memory map when using a TLB. Here is a picture of the virtual memory map. On a MIPS 32 core, it can cover a 4 gigabyte range of physical memory. The lower segment of memory, KUSEG, covers a virtual address range from 0 to 7F, FF, 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 and can be cached and mapped using the TLB to anywhere in physical memory. This segment can be accessed in kernel or user mode. The next two sections, KSEG0 and KSEG1, are designed to be used for the OS code and data. These segments can only be accessed in kernel mode. They are both directly translated to the same lower 512 megabytes of memory. For example, address 8000000 and address A0000 are both directly mapped to physical address 0. The difference between the two is KSEG 0 addresses are cacheable to be used once the cache has been initialized. KSEG 1 addresses are not cached to be used at boot time and for memory mapped I.O. The next two segments cover the virtual address range that runs contiguously from C0000000 to the top of memory FF, 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 and is accessible only in kernel mode. We will now go through a simple TLB translation. When an address is accessed by a process, the TLB uses two different things to find the correct internal table entry, the virtual address itself and the process's address space identifier, or ACID. The ACID will cause the lookup to be valid for entries that match only the current process's entries. The virtual address is broken down into two pieces, the virtual page number and the address within the page. This breakdown allows the TLB to map large areas of memory with just one entry. A typical page size is 4K. This means that the lower 12 bits of the address will be the index within the page and the upper 20 bits will be the virtual page number or VPN. The VPN is used to select the TLB entry with the correct virtual page number. The TLB will then use that entry's physical page number, or PFN, combined with the lower bits of the virtual address to translate and complete the physical address. If the TLB lookup fails, the CPU will signal an exception. The exception handler is then responsible for looking up the virtual address translation in the process's page table and replacing an entry in the TLB with it. Then the CPU will again execute the instruction that caused the exception, 
and search the TLB once more for the correct entry. Now for a more detailed view of the actual TLB. You cannot actually read or write whole TLB entries. There are coprocessor zero registers designed to hold the data to be read or written to the TLB. These coprocessor zero registers will be covered in more detail later in this section. This table shows which register contains which piece of data that will go into making up of a TLB entry. I will explain each item that makes up the TLB. G is the global permissions bit. If this bit is set, the address space identifier is ignored and all processes can use this entry. This is used by the OS and for memory that will be shared by all processes. For TLB read or write operations, this bit is stored in entry low 0 and 1 registers. The ACID is a specific identifier that is assigned by the OS to a process. This address space identifier helps to reduce the frequency of TLB flushing because it allows the mapping of up to 256 different address spaces simultaneously without requiring the TLB to be cleared on a context switch. When the G bit is not set, the TLB will concatenate the ACID and the virtual page number to find the correct entry. The ACID is stored in the entry high register. VPN2 is the virtual page number to be looked up. Each entry contains two translations, one for the even number page and one for the odd number page. The lower order bit of the VPN is not used to find the entry, but is used to determine which of the two translations contained in the entry is used. The VPN is stored in the entry high register. CMAST determines the size of the page that is mapped by this entry. CMAST is stored in the page mask register. PFN0 is the physical address translation for the even numbered page. PFN0 is stored in the entry low 0 register. The C bit is the cacheability attribute of the page. This will determine if the translated page address will be looked up in the cache or directly used to access memory. The C bit is stored in the entry low register. The D bit is the dirty bit or the write enable bit. If this bit is set, stores to the page are permitted. If the bit is cleared, stores to the page cause a TLB modified exception. An OS can use this bit to determine if the page has been written and thus dirty. The OS ensures the bit is cleared when it writes the entry to the TLB. When the OS is trying to decide if the page needs to be written to backing store, it will check this bit and avoid an unnecessary write if the bit is cleared, indicating that the page is not dirty. Note, if the OS uses this method, then when a TLB modified exception occurs and it sets the D bit in the table entry, it also needs to set the D bit in the processes page table entry. Otherwise, if the page gets overwritten by a TLB write random instruction, the information will be lost. The D bit is stored in the entry low zero register. The V bit will determine if the entry is valid and usable. If it is not set, the entry will not be used. This bit should be cleared at boot time during the TLB initialization. The V bit is stored in the entry low zero register. The next group of information is the same as for the PFN zero, except it is for the odd physical page translation and uses the entry low one register. I'll now go into details on registers involved with the TLB functionality starting with the entry high register. The entry high register is register 10 of coprocessor 0. This slide assumes a 4K page size. 
the register contains two elements, the virtual page number and the address space identifier, or ACID. The ACID field is written by software, usually during a context switch. Entry high is filled in when you are reading a TLB entry using the TLB read instruction. Because the ACID field is overwritten by a TLBR instruction, software must save and restore the value of the ACID around the use of TLBR. Entry high is read into the TLB entry using the TLB write or TLB write random instructions. I have overlaid the entry high register with the page mask register so you can see the effect the page mask register has on the VPN2 address. The page mask register allows TLB entries to map pages larger than 4K. The one bits in the page mask have the effect of causing the corresponding bit of the virtual address to be ignored when matching the TLB entry. Instead, the bit is carried unchanged to the resulting physical address, effectively increasing the page size by a power of 4 for each mass bit up to 256 megabytes. Bits must be filled in from right to left and always in pairs. Note the odd even page selection bit also moves two bits with each mass position. The page mass register is filled in when you are reading a TLB instruction using the TLB read instruction. It is read into the TLB entry using the TLB write or TLB write random instructions. This slide shows the default values for a 4K page. This slide shows that setting bits 13 and 14 will cause the page size to increase to 16K. The entry low 0 and 1 registers contain the translation information. They contain the physical frame number, the cache control bits, the dirty bit or write control bit, the valid bit, and the global bit. The index register is used by the TLB write index or TLB read instructions to determine the TLB entry to be written or read. It is also used by the TLB probe instruction to determine if an entry exists in the TLB. If the probe was successful, bit 31 of this register will be cleared. The wired register is a read-write register that specifies the number of wired entries in the TLB. For example, if you wrote a 10 to the wired register, TLB entries 0 through 9 would be unchangeable by the TLB write random instruction. To write TLB entries that are in the wired range, you must use the TLB write index instruction. The random register is a read-only register that is used to determine the TLB index when you use a TLB write random instruction. It is decremented by 1 almost every clock, wrapping after the value in the wired register is reached. To enhance the level of randomness and reduce the possibility of a live lock condition, a linear feedback shift register is used to introduce a pseudo-random perturbation into the decrement. The processor initializes the random register to the number of TLB entries minus one on a reset exception and when the wired register is written. This register is only valid with the TLB. I'm going to show you how to initialize the TLB. You should initialize the TLB as part of the boot process before you enable it. First, we will need to get the size of the TLB. The TLB size, along with other information, is stored in the read-only coprocessor 0 register called config1. You can read this register by using the move from coprocessor 0 instruction. Here I'm going to move into General Purpose Register 10, the Config Register 1, which is coprocessor 
0, register 16, select 1. Next, I will extract the MMU size information by using the abstract instruction. From general purpose register 10, where I just stored the config register, into general purpose number 11, starting at bit 25 for 6 bits. Remember, the size value extracted is the total number of TLB entries minus 1, since the first entry is 0. Now to clear all entry registers. To do this, we use the same move to coprocessor 0 instruction using the general purpose register 0, which always contains a 0 value, and move it to the corresponding coprocessor 0 registers. Now we will use a loop to initialize each TLB entry. The one in the left hand column is a label of the start of the loop and the point we will loop back to. Remember, we stored the highest number TLB entry in general purpose register 11. We will use it here to decrement through the TLB entries from the highest to the lowest and use it to program the TLB index. I use a move to coprocessor 0 instruction to copy the contents of the general purpose register 11 to coprocessor 0 register which is the index register. I need to make sure that all writes have been completed to coprocessor 0 before the TLB entry is written. I do this by using the EHB instruction. I now use the TLB write index instruction to write the TLB entry. Next is the branch not equal instruction. Here I compare the TLB index value that is in general purpose register 11 with 0. And if they are not equal, I go back to label 1. The last instruction is in the branch delay slot and will always be executed. I use the add instruction to increment the index value in general purpose register 11 by a negative 1. For many systems, the amount of entries in the TLB will not be enough to cover the range of address translations needed. In this case, the TLB will just serve similar to a data cache, providing most transactions very quickly and have to call on help to fill in translations it doesn't currently have. Such systems will have an in-memory page table for the OS and each process that is currently running. If the TLB does not find a translation in its entries, it will cause a TLB exception. MIPS has a way of making a TLB exception easy and fast. In the MIPS scheme, the in-memory page table is a linear array of entry low, zero, and one entries. There is an 8-byte alignment between the values in each pair to make it compatible with MIPS64 processors that have a 64-bit address space. This means that each pair is 16-byte aligned. The context register is organized in such a way that the operating system can directly reference an 8-byte page table entry or PTE in memory. This index will point to the entry low 0 entry of the entry low 0 and 1 pair of the page table. On a context switch, you will need to write the base address of the process's page table into the context register. The page table must be aligned to a 4 megabyte boundary, which means only the top 9 most significant bits are needed. When a TLB exception happens, the processor fills in the virtual page number that it needs translated. So the register will contain the index to a 16 byte aligned entry low 0 and 1 pair. I'm going to show you an example of a TLB exception handler. First, you need an assembler directive to ensure that the assembler does not reorder the code when it tries to optimize. You do this by the directive dot set no reorder. Next, we label the function TLB miss32. 
Now we copy the context register, which holds the page tables index into a kernel register. As a side note, kernel registers are set aside by the MIPS API for use by the kernel. These are usually used for exceptions because they don't have to be saved. There are two registers reserved as kernel general purpose registers. Register 26, designated here as K0, and register 27, designated here as K1. The copy is done using the move from coprocessor 0 instruction to kernel register K1 from coprocessor register 4, the context register. Now we use the index to load the page table's entry low 0 value into the other kernel register. We use a load word instruction to load kernel register K0 using the index stored in kernel register K1. Next, we will use the index to load the page table's entry low 1 value into the kernel register. We use a load word instruction to load kernel register K1 using the index stored in kernel register K1 with an offset of 8. Now that we have the values to write to the TLB, we need to move them into the appropriate coprocessor 0 registers. We use the move coprocessor 0 instruction to move the entry low 0 value stored in the kernel register K0 to the coprocessor register 2, which is the entry low 0 register. We again use the move coprocessor 0 instruction to move the entry low 1 value stored in the kernel register K1 to the coprocessor register 3, which is the entry low 1 register. Now to ensure all values are written properly, we need to clear the instruction hazard barrier by using the EHB instruction. We can now write the new entry to the TLB using the TLB write random instruction. Last, we use the return from exception instruction to go back to normal processing. The last line, dot set reorder, tells the assembler that it can continue optimization of the code from this point. Since the TLB refill exception already filled in the virtual address and the address space identifier with the address that missed in the TLB, we only needed eight instructions to do the refill. Page tables are usually only as big as they need to be to cover memory that the program actually uses. Most processes are filled from the bottom with code and data and down from the top with their stack. There is a big hole in the middle that's empty and will never be referenced. To make the system think there are no holes and still be able to index into the table as if it covered the whole 4 gigabytes of address space, the processes page tables use virtual memory mapped in the OS page table. As part of a context switch, all your OS needs to do is to write the processes ACID value to the entry high register, which will control which TLB entries are valid for the new process. Since the processes page table is in OS virtual memory, access to it can also cause a TLB miss exception. To distinguish this nested TLB exception from a primary TLB exception, the CPU uses the general exception vector instead of the TLB exception vector. When the general exception vector is used, the OS knows to use its own page table to fill in the TLB entry. The OS page table is located in KSEG 0, which is not TLB mapped, so no TLB miss can happen on an access to it. The CPU knows the second TLB exception should be nested because the EXL bit in the status register was set at the time of the exception. The EXL bit being set triggers the CPU to not change the error PC register. The EPC is the program counter of the instruction that got the exception and where the execution will start when the exception processing has completed. Since it does not get changed, 
and it is still pointing to the instruction that caused the first TLB exception, when the nested exception returns, the CPU will get another TLB exception. This time, the process's page table entry will be mapped into the TLB so that it can be used to fill the TLB entry. Let's go through a flowchart of nested TLB miss exception handling. First, the CPU tries to do a TLB lookup and it checks to see if it was successful. There is a TLB miss, so the processor generates a TLB exception. The exception handler tries to look up the entry in the processor's page table and we get another TLB miss. This time, we start executing from the general exception handler. This handler will fill in the processor's page table miss from the OS page table. The CPU returns back to user mode. The lookup is tried again and fails. Another TLB exception is generated, but this time the entry is found in the processes page table. The TLB is filled in from the processes page table entry and returns back to user mode. The TLB lookup happens again, and this time it was successful. This ends this training session. Thanks for watching.